my cute pad here. First I want to congratulate the new Northwestern class of 2024. I am so excited that y'all chose Northwestern for this year and I'm really hoping, especially with all the coronavirus stuff, that we get to have a really exciting fun year for you all and I'm excited to meet everyone, especially because I'm a PA this year, meaning that I'll be there with freshman orientation and everything like that. So I'm really excited for this year. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the major North Campus dorms since there's so many dorms on campus and I wanted to split them up so that way it's not 30 minute long video. Hi, speaking of the video being too long, I decided to cut out the air segment where I lived, but I have a move-in vlog and room tour on my channel if you wanna check that out. And back to the video. If you want South Campus dorms, make sure you comment that down below. And even if you aren't interested in living in North Campus, I recommend you sticking around and just to learn more about Northwestern and the way that dorms and social scene and whatnot works. So I'm gonna try and cover as much information in this video as possible, because I remember like this is such a big decision, choosing where you wanna live next year, and I remember not having a lot of information, especially since all the information is so subjective and it's very opinionated. I'm gonna to try to be as non-biased as possible, but obviously I want you to make sure you keep in mind that this is my experience and what I've heard, and it may not represent like how you might experience any dorm or anything like that. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about the difference between North and South Campus that, if you didn't know already, I think they make a big difference. I think both, you can live on both sides of the campus and like enjoy your freshman year so much. It's important that you keep in mind that they are different. I personally love living North Campus my freshman year because I'm a STEM major and a lot of my classes uh, ended up being North Campus because Tech's North Campus and a lot of the sciencey buildings are North Campus while a lot of the humanities buildings end up being South Campus. So that's like one of the major differences is like how long you're willing to walk to class. But like also keep in mind that the difference between North and South usually takes like 15 minutes of a walk. It can be more and less, but like in general, you're still gonna be able to get to all your classes from either side of campus. Um, some benefits of North Campus is that I think it's more social, mostly because I think the frat quad is up here, which is also good for guys who are considering rushing that it's nice to be so close, especially with all the rush events that happen throughout the year. And then also there's the Henry Crown Sports Pavilion or like whatever one calls it is SPAC. So um, that is the athletic facility that we have on campus that is North Campus. So a lot of the athletes like to live North Campus, especially because practices and everything like that ends up being at SPAC. For South Campus, I think that's where most of the humanities and um, non STEMI majors live. Is STEMI a word? STEMI is not a word. I don't know what I'm saying. Ignore me. Um, I think one of the major advantages of living South Campus is that you get to be so close to downtown Evanston. Like if you want to go to even Burger King or to get food anywhere else besides on campus, North Campus is so much more work to like walk not only the 15 minutes that take South Campus, but another like 10 or 15 minutes to get to anywhere. So like a target trip is going to take a lot more time for a North Campus person than it will be for a South Campus person. But for me, I think it was better to live North Campus again because it made me not go out and get food as often, which was a bad habit for me to get into. And then also, I like the Sargent Dining Hall. And then I think the top two dining halls are usually considered Sargent and Allison. I think the real difference between these two is I think Allison does better with like healthier food, kind of. It's more like healthy dorm food. And then Sargent kind of does the basic college dorm food. I just think Sargent's better, but... It's all up to you and what you consider and what you like. I know people from South Campus who walk all the way North Campus to go to Sargent every day. And I know people from North Campus who do the same as Allison. So it's really like, it's super preferential. And like, you have to like really look at what you want and what you're looking for and your eating style and whatnot. So I'm gonna cover four main points for all the places that I'm gonna be talking about just to make sure that I'm covering what at least I consider like some of the major differences between any dorm. So I also I have notes written down on my phone. So if you will see me looking down there, that's what I'm doing. So the four main points that I'm gonna be covering is location, like where is it? Is it a good place to be? Is it close to other places? Uh, to room size, 
like is it that's just what it is it's like is the room huge is it small the size of your space makes a difference social scene does the physical building um encourage social interactions or is it harder to make friends in this dorm and lastly i'm going to cover um, amenities basically like lounges study rooms other things that this dorm or place has that makes it a little bit nicer or convenient or something the first place i'm going to talk about is elder so i think elder probably has one of the worst locations just because it's across the street actually from everything else so it takes that just extra effort to get there and it's so far north that especially if you want to go anywhere south it takes a lot of effort then again it is right there next to the bus stop so if you want to catch the bus down it is the closest place to be so it has its benefits overall it is farther away so i would not like the location i think the rooms are pretty good sized especially compared to like most of the other rooms on campus. Just to put this in perspective, the floor plan for each dorm is not consistent. So maybe like most of the rooms may be big for one dorm and then you end up getting a really small room or like vice versa, you might end up getting a big room. This dorm that I'm showing you right now is a little bit bigger than the normal elder room size, but don't expect yourself to get this like larger room. I'm sorry if this video is a mess. I'm a mess social scene i've heard of so many elder squads like it's just like i think the way that the building is built is very conducive of social interactions and i think a lot of people have made really good friends there um there's like many lounges study rooms the dining hall is right there since elder has its own dining hall so those are like pretty nice overall i think elder is like a pretty good dorm so the next dorm i'm going to be talking about is lincoln in my opinion, Lincoln is the best dorm that we have at Northwestern, but there are trade-offs with this. Farthest north you can be with and still be on campus, so that's a little bit annoying. But in general, the rooms are huge. For freshmen, the way that suites work is that there are two doubles in each suite, so that means that four people are going to be sharing a bathroom and a shower and two sinks, and then you have a common space that you get to be in. In terms of social scene, I think Lincoln is a hard place to meet people necessarily just because you have your own bathroom and you're not in the halls as often. But I think it's a place that if you find people, if you're able to find people, it's a really good place to hang out at or it's a really good place to bring your friends back to. The amenities are just so nice. Lincoln has so many study rooms and lounges and there's a laundry room on each floor and so many different like nice things about living in Lincoln. It is called Hotel Lincoln. It is so nice. There is a trade-off with living in Lincoln, such as cost. This may or may not be a factor in your life, but I wanted to make sure I mentioned it for the people that it is, because a single room will cost more than a double room, or a room in Lincoln will cost more than a room somewhere else necessarily. You may have to make sure you look that up and make sure you're keeping in mind that just because the nicer amenities do have a trade-off. Like it is not, you don't just like, oh, win the lottery and get this nice room while everyone else still pays the same. It makes sense in my opinion, but like, I want to make sure you guys are aware of that before you put Lincoln as your first. So the next dorm that I'm going to be talking about is Slipka. Slipka is a residential college that focuses on science. I want to say there's a more specific name that I'll put down here. Basically what this means is that typically the people who choose to live in Slipka are a STEM major. Slivka is a pretty nice location. Like Slivka, Ayers, and Bob Mulholic are all in the same like basically spot. I think the location for Slivka is pretty good. It's north but not too far north. Slivka, Ayers, and Bob Mulholic all are in the same like tripod. So those three dorms are all close to SPAC, which is once again the athletic facility. It is also pretty close to Sargent, which is the dining hall nearby also close to elder it's not too far from tech which most stem classes are in and most other classes are kind of nearby there so i think in general like these three dorms have a decent location another benefit is that you have lisa's which is this cafe that is attached to slipka that anyone can go into and basically you can get like food or snacks or you can use like dining dollars and it's really nice to be close to that and be able to get stuff especially because the dining halls usually close around 8 p.m. 
Lisa's ends up staying open until I think midnight or 1 a.m. So if you want a late night snack, especially like a hot food, it's really nice to be able to have a place nearby that you can get that, especially since you live north campus and most of the time you don't want to walk 20 minutes to go all the way downtown Evanston to get food. So I really like having Lisa's nearby um, and I lived in Ayers just for context. But back to Slivka, location is nice. Room sizes are probably one of the better ones at Northwestern. They have newer furniture, newer lounges, and stuff like that. Um, the way that it works in Slivka too is that you live in suites, which are eight people with two bathrooms. So the way that it works out is that each group of four shares one bathroom, which can be a benefit, especially if you don't wanna use communal showers. Pretty low key, you can find friends there. I would describe it as more of a staying in vibe than a going out vibe. You can still like hang out with people, but I think people tend to watch movies or play video games rather than get loud and get crazy, kind of. I would say if you're looking for more chill social hangouts, this is a place that you would want to be. The next dorm I'm going to talk about is Bob McCulloch. First of all, I'm going to just say that even if you live in Bob or if you live in McCulloch, Everyone just refers to it as Bob. If you say that you live in McCulloch, you'll be known as a freshman and you will be made fun of relentlessly. But I'm here to save you from that. Make sure you say you live in Bob just because Bob, that's just the nickname of Bob McCulloch because they are literally the same building. They're just different sides of it that you can't even tell the difference if you're walking in the hall and you're not looking. You it just like all of a sudden you go from Bob and McCulloch and you there are no indications besides the letter of the room numbers changing from a B to an M. And it is in every sense the same dorm, but it's just two sides of it. In terms of location, I would say Bob is about the same as Ayers or Slivka. It has the same benefits, but it's a little bit farther south, so it's just a tiny bit closer to Sarge and SPAC and Tech and other places. The rooms tend to be smaller and less nice. In general, Bob is just a lesser quality dorm. I'm not gonna lie to you guys about that. It's just older and people tend not to take care of it. Bob is considered one of the more social dorms. A lot of people make really solid communities at Bob. And then I think also having a lesser quality dorm bonds people a lot of the time. So that is a benefit of living in Bob. So the last dorm I'm gonna talk about today is Sargent, also known as Sarge. In my opinion, Sarge has the best location possible for a dorm. It has what I consider to be the best dining hall within the dorm, so there's a real convenience factor in living in Sarge. You also get to be right next to Tech, where, once again, most of the STEM classes are. Um, a lot of the other STEM buildings are right next door. And then you also still get to be close to the frat quad and SPAC and all the other amenities of living in a North Campus dorm. But like always, there are some trade-offs to living in Sargent. In general, Sargent has pretty small rooms. Probably one of the most common complaints of anyone who lives in Sarge is that there's no AC, so it gets pretty hot. In terms of social scene in Sargent, it's kind of a who you ask kind of question. Some people thought it was really good and met a lot of friends, and some people just didn't really connect with anyone. It really just depends, but then again, you can say that with any dorm on campus. So that concludes my video. Please give this a thumbs up if it was able to help you. And be sure to share this video with anyone else this could benefit. Leave any questions you have in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.